How are you, sir? Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can hear you great. Thank you oh, so much for talking to me. I'm very honored to, to speak to you. I appreciate the time. Where are you coming from? New York City. Oh, cool. So where are you, where are you looking? You're in, uh, you were in South Carolina, right? For your, your... Right, but, but uh, um, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, a place called Roswell, Georgia. Oh, sure. Sure, yeah. I'm familiar with it. Sure. Yeah. Well, very nice. Very nice. Thank you so much for, for speaking to me. So last night to get ready, I went and rewatched um, Meals on Wheels. I hadn't seen it in a, in a while. Uh, what an what a enjoyable uh, what a great movie i i the um the last you know the last segment of of fight scenes is just really um well very well done really ahead of its time yeah i i agree and uh the benny's last fight scene which lasted probably 10 minutes with jackie chan and my last fight scene with young bao um both were both got awards uh i was in one video uh, all best fight scenes of all time, and they um, awarded me with that one. And the Benny, of course, he's in uh, almost every one of the top rated fight scenes of all time with Jackie Chan. That was phenomenal. That, that that's true. So so we just so you know we're not live. We're 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 taping. We're going to use use it later. But um, obviously, I'm speaking to a legend. I'm speaking to uh, Grandmaster Keith Vitale today, who is uh, a a martial artist, uh, a teacher a writer, a publisher, a movie star, a fighter, a champion, among other things. And we're talking about um, the film, one of the films that, that, that he was in, uh, which was called Meals on Wheels. And you're 100% right. Those scenes are listed in almost every list of the top martial arts fight scenes of all time um, are listed and, and justifiably so, you know, we talk now to a lot of, uh, martial artists, filmmakers, and the American cinema scene is in martial arts is just catching up sort of with Hong Kong of the, of that day in terms of the way that they shoot action scenes, you know, um, no shaky cam, uh, you know, uh, you know, well choreographed scenes with, with real intensity. And sometimes people like yourself get knocked out or knocked unconscious, um, as a result of the fact that the hits are real. You know, and the most incredible thing, my best observation, I, you know, I've been in a good many movies, and I remember my first one was Revenge of the Ninja, which was the biggest movie I've ever been in. The, the, one of the biggest, most profitable um, ninja movies or just martial arts movies of all time. It was phenomenal. But on the set, daily, watching the action, I thought it was wasn't that good i thought I, sure. I thought it was too bloody too graphic too violent i didn't think it was i mean i, I didn't get a feel for it it wasn't aesthetically beautiful it was just rough and guttural and and you know the appeal was the ninja appeal all the uniforms and, and all the weapons that show kasugi brought to the set however doing the jackie chan film wills on mills watching it in person being a part of it, but sitting there watching it in person without editing, without sound, with you know, without special effects, without sure. all the, the magic that you do in post editing, just sitting there watching it visually, I thought it was the best thing I have ever seen, better than anything I have ever seen. That was just raw. Just I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I was seeing it. That's amazing. That's how incredible that was, versus watching something already post edited with music and and everything else. It was just incredible to behold, just to be a part of that. Well, that's great. That's great. You've done some phenomenal stuff. So I wanted to roll it back because in in reading a little bit, I see that you didn't get started like uh, many of the the people that we talked to. You got started a little bit later in life. You didn't get started as a child in in, in the martial arts. I see that you you had an, uh, a a meeting with uh, Grandmaster Roper, who was a Korean karate taekwondo. Master exactly. at the time at the University of South Carolina, which is right. where, you, where you attended. I know you were sort of born and raised or spent most of your early years there. Um, but tell me about getting involved in the martial arts at that point. Did you have a desire to do it earlier? Did you have familiarity with it earlier? Or was that really the first, uh, the first exposure that, that led you into this? Mark, that's a great question. It's fact, I've done podcasts and interviews, thousands of them. It's so strange. Nobody has ever asked me that question. Really? Nobody's ever come with that angle because here's the here's the phenomenal um, observation about what you just asked. 
nobody ever thought of making a career in martial arts. Martial arts just started. Nobody right. knew what it was. I didn't know what it was. I had heard of it. I've seen Kung Fu Theater on TV, but I didn't know what karate was. And I was running track. I had a scholarship. I was a distance runner. And I was I ran in a college in Charleston. I came home to Columbia, where I went to high school, and my family is. And one of my best friends, John Bellinger, comes over to the house, and he says, come with me. I want you to meet my karate instructor. I said, well, what's karate? He goes, do me a favor. Stand here. Hold your hand out. And he hit me with a sidekick and knocked me on the ground. And I went, what was that? I had never seen that before. And he said, he said we call that a sidekick. He says, do that. I said, no, I'm not doing anything else. Just take me, show me where you, <laughs> where you learn this magic. How can you transform this guy who's a normal guy into a killing machine? You know, so he took me to, to uh, the University of South Carolina. It was a small class. John Roper was there. And he walks over to me. Just a handful of people were there. The handful of people that were there that day are still friends with me today. Wow. Still friends when I walked in. Early 70s. So I walked in. John Roper was just, he looked magical. He's Korean. and He had the awe, you know, and he walks over and he says, um, do you want to take karate? And I went, I'm, I've been watching it. I loved, I got intrigued by the sparring. Gear won't be invented for another six or seven years. So I'm just watching these guys just go at it. And I said, I'd love to, but I have a track scholarship. I'm in another school. He goes, that's a shame. If you ever want to transfer here, I would teach you here at the University of South Carolina. I went home that day, called up my coach at, at this college in Charleston, got rid of, canceled my track scholarship. Then next day, I got in the car, drove over to the University of South Carolina to admissions and applied to go to USC. Wow. Then got accepted and then started my karate classes that day. I mean, that, that semester when it started. Then I started and it was magical. But back then, it was Nobody knew a lot about karate, but there was karate at Fort Jackson. The merchant marines and different people would come into Fort Jackson from all over the country, and they would come into our karate school at USC and challenge us. We had challenges. We had black universities. We had three South Carolina historic for black universities. They had a couple of uh, black clubs. They would come over, but they don't come over and say, we would like to spar with you. They come just like in the movies because all they knew were like the movies. They had their long hair. They'd have their geese, their head would be down, and they have blood on their geese, and they go, we're here to challenge you. And I was a white belt at the time, and my instructor, Green, he didn't care. He was the meanest human being on this planet. He was just, he hated everybody. It was, it was worse than any boot camp, any soldier would go through Marine Corps, uh, Marine Corps. We would start up with 300 students, and he says, I don't want 300. And the University of South Carolina, I want five or six good ones. So he would just work us to death until everybody would quit until the five or six people were, were left over. And I was so stubborn. I went, this man is not getting rid of me. And he would back kick me and hit me, and, and I'd come back every time. But what he would do after the first year, I was a white belt for one year and one month. He would not promote me. He was just, he was just, you know, just as mean as a, but he just, all he cared about was form and discipline and respect. And people come into the school all the time, and they'd come to challenge, and he'd always go, my tally, I'd have to go, sir. He say fight them, and then you go kill them. You know, I'm wow. most of the time I'm a white belt. I'm fighting guys twice my size with no gear. I'm getting, I'm getting beaten up and hit. By the end of one year, one month, I had not, I had broken 51 different people's ribs with my sidekick. That's from incredible. So 51 different people, because gear's not there, and they'd come in, and I figured it out on my own how to deliver a powerful sidekick, because he learned also from Bruce Lee himself. So I learned this sidekick on how to really deliver my heel in a, in a way. And it was phenomenal, and I really enjoyed it. And I mean, then it was a different era. But I remember years later, friends of mine from Columbia, South Carolina, the Mike Genovas and Bruce Grucci's and all these guys that, that you know were friends of mine, they would tell me stories about me. And I go, what are you talking about? And they said, well, you were, you were nuts. You were in that karate school with Roper, and all you, guys <laughs> were in, you guys were insane. But think That's about great. this. I, I ran distance, so I I was blessed to run. I don't know how that happened. I was not blessed in martial arts. Martial arts was hard. I just I worked so hard, and I just couldn't believe the how how much I had to work to get good at martial arts. Running, I could break records. The first day I ever ran, I was breaking records, and that's why I got a scholarship. But so I've got the cardio cardiovascular. That means I have great wind. I can fight all day long, and my legs are strong because I've been running distance. Sure. Long. So just imagine getting in the ring with me, 
I'm skinny with the boniest chins you've ever seen. I can fight you all day long and I don't ever get tired. Plus, I'll kick you so hard. I'll kick you hard enough where I'll hit you one side of the arm. I'll bruise the other side of your arm, your other side of your body. That's great. You know, so that's how I started. But never did I have any vision or dream of going, I want to be, I didn't know anything about it. Nobody did. And then we started traveling as a collegiate team, and I would travel and fight with guys like Bill Wallace, Joe Lewis, Jack, no, all these different people around the country sure. while they were coming up, while they were just making a name for themselves. So what wonderful experience that I have to train with and fight the very best Benny Akitas. I fought everybody, trained with everybody as I was coming up. And so I, I feel like royalty. I feel like my mentors were the cream sure. of the crop, best of all time. That is great, and and you are uh, you really have you you are the best, and surrounded by the best is really it's terrific. So, in reading, actually, in reading, I, I know it's, you're a big fan, but uh, in in reading Chuck Norris's book, right, he tells the story of of being um, selected uh, for the movies as a result of the fact that there were so few people um, that had the ability, uh, the, the his types of ability, and that. They were looking for somebody to do action and stunts. And I, and I spoke to Stephen Lambert, who is a martial arts stunt person in a, in a million. Wonderful. Movies. One of my best friends. Very Great guy. We, we, yeah, we talked to him on the release of his book. So tell me about you. Is your experience similar making that transition from fighter, uh, from world class, world champion fighter to um, the, the movies? Was it a similar transition or was it something a little bit more deliberate and different? It was more deliberate. It was different. It was harder. Um, some people were, you know, had the vision of being an actor one day, were taking acting classes, and maybe that was their dream. I was just a, a, a pure fighter. And I competed during one of the best eras of martial arts. That's why I feel so blessed, because I competed while not only the top fighters of all time, all these founding fathers and wonderful people were there. I got a chance to fight with them. I also competed in the era where the magazines, the karate magazines, also rewarded the top fighters, all top 10 fighters, with articles about them and covers. Well, the covers were the key because the more covers you received, the more exposure you had, not just here in America, but, but the worldwide. Our sure. magazines at that time went all over the world. So I had about 13, 12, 13 covers in a short amount of time. And Priscilla uh, McDonald was the right-hand girl from a guy named Menaka Begum for Canon Films. Sure. And Canon Films just moved here from Germany and they opened up Canon Films. They did, they did uh, the first uh, ninja movie with a friend of mine, Mike Stone. Sure. They didn't use Mike before. They used, they went to Shokasugi to star in it. And then Priscilla told Menachem, says, I keep seeing this Vitaly guy on all these magazine covers. So the cool thing about it is the, I was at the karate school teaching classes. I was working for Joe Crawley at the time in one of his schools. And uh, I get a phone call and um, my wife, now, but she was my wife at the time. She came out of the mat. She was working for me. Now she's a big loan officer, one of the top loan officers in the, in the country. But anyway, she was working with me at the time, and she goes, uh, there's a phone call from you. This lady wants to speak to you. So I leave my class. I get on the phone, and this lady goes, hi, I'm Priscilla McDonald from Canada Films. They'd like to offer you a free movie deal to do action movies. And I went, wonderful. Tell Mike Geneva, my best friend, to kiss my ass. And I hung up on him. You thought it was a joke. I walked back out on the mat. <laughs> Genema, I talked to today already. He's been my best friend for 40 years. That's the stuff he does. So she comes back <laughs> out. She says, she says uh, listen, this person really wants to talk to you again. So I go back and I pick up the phone and she goes, listen, don't hang up on me. My name is Priscilla again. And uh, I don't know who this Mike Geneva is, but you're getting ready to lose a three movie deal with Canon Films. <laughs> and then she says, we like what we saw. on the, We liked the way you looked. So we want to fly you out. And I flew out. They thought I was an actor as well because they were asking me questions. Like Shmulek did. He's, oh, you've never acted before. And I went, no. And here's the hard thing. And I love Chuck Norris. He's been the guy I looked up to. Him and I discussed this a lot. It was hard for fighters. I would fight and train. And I was serious. As a fighter, when somebody says fight, the center referee says fight, you get in this mental state of mind where you shut down emotionally and you're focused and what you want to do is not show pain not project right probably the opposite of anything right. related to martial to films 
So I would take acting classes, I would work on it, but when that director said, action, I go, Whoop. my eyes were shut, and I wouldn't project like I needed to project. So I remember uh, Sho Kasugi would open my eyes and work with me, and then Jackie Chan would work with me on the side, going, Keith, you gotta project more, which was, I knew. And, and I could do it during rehearsals, but as soon as they said, action, I would climb, I would climb up. I would just revert back to the fighter and not the actor. Years sure. later, I took more acting classes. I relaxed more. You know, when you get more confidence. Sure. Of course, I didn't have that in my first few films. You know, so I just remember, you know, I'm just sitting there going, I would just get right back in that fighter mentality. And I wish I had been more confident and, and shown more personality the whole bit. But you look at Chuck first films, we have the same thing. Sure. And, and I think there's also an element, you know, I was speaking to Scott Atkins about this when we interviewed him, is that, you know, when you get into a real fight or you get into a, a whether it be on the street or whether it be in a tournament, the concept is to end the fight as quickly and as efficiently as possible. But in a film, that doesn't lend itself to good viewing. So the fights need to be longer. They need to be more elaborate. They need to be more well choreographed, which is a little bit of a different mentality. It isn't as much your fighter mentality. You become more of an artist and a dancer, and, and you're choreographing moves as opposed to trying to really win a fight. Right, and then you have your two, you have your two Western and Eastern philosophies of style of fighting, you know, and that's totally different. Sure. I'm telling you, I've taken more pride that I have started movies with the Chinese with the fast-paced action, the way it's choreographed, and the speed and the timing. You, you don't have a chance. You, you, don't, you can't hesitate for a second. You've got to know your mark. You've got to know what the light is. You've got to right. be able to fight people with weapons, two people at the same time. And you can't in the, mid in the middle of the fight go, uh, excuse me, I mean, you've got to be sharp. And there's only a certain amount of people during that time that could fight like that. And so I took Clyde, I was one of them and they wanted to use me all the time. It's, it's incredible. One of my fight scenes with Jackie Chan, I was with Samuel Hung. Uh, it literally was Samuel and, and we had to do one thing a scene where I had to do a jump spinning kick and break his staff. And it took 50 takes, 50 takes. Wow. Phenomenal. But, it, you know, sometimes I messed up, sometimes they would, sometimes they didn't like what they saw, but they were perfectionists. And it, it was incredible. Whereas when you fight on the American side or the Western side, there was more John Wayne style where you actually pull back, almost show the audience your fist, as before you swing through. I like Scott Atkins. I think he's probably one of the best, if not the best out there. And we're talking about, we've been texting, maybe doing something together one day. That's maybe great. More, more in a production standpoint, producer standpoint, he's, but he's phenomenal. I mean. Um, and, and like yourself, he's a phenomenally inviting and kind and well-spoken individual. I really, I, I have great affinity for him. He's, a, as well as being a great and dangerous guy, he's a very humble guy as well. Well, one of my best friends is a guy named Keith Strandberg. Keith had produced like nine movies. And Keith and I, he, we started doing movies together. We're best friends. And we, then we became producers together. And we started this action film camp in Storm King, uh, New York, this area, and with Michael D. Pasquale. Oh, and sure. We would bring a team of producers and karate fighters. Everybody had their niche, their skill. And then we wanted people from around the world to fly in and learn how to break into films. And we probably put over 100 people in films from these camps. One was Scott. And when he showed up one day, we just looked and said, he is the single best we have ever seen. Now, I've worked with a lot of people. Wow. You know, and I, Gary, Gary Daniels probably right there with him. But Gary's phenomenal. But Scott, I never, I, you know, it made me feel inferior. And I would teach that in, in the classes. I said, guys, everybody wants to be a star. We're not looking for stars. The stars are there. You've got to start from the beginning. Right. You've got to make the stars look good. We're going to teach you how to do the, just like I told you, sell the techniques. I want you to, with your face, I want you to physically project fear, anger, whatever it is. But you've got to sell. When you get hit, you've got to sell it with your body and your face. So those are the kind of things that we, we taught. And I always said, you know, le learn from my lack of, of expertise. I'm the opposite. You know, very little sure. can I do. If they go, can you do this? I go, I'm not sure I can do that, which you never want to say. Right, right, right. I ask Gary Daniels um, or somebody like uh, Scott Atkins, can you do this? They would do it. In a, there's nothing they could do. You know, whereas <laughs> I was limited. I had that fight scene with Jackie Chan in the courtyard. And 
I am pretty well known as a fighter for my psyche. And again, like I said, I destroy people in real life with my psyche. So Sal Samo really likes my power, my psyche. So we're doing this court court scene. Benny Akitas is fighting Samo. I mean, fighting Jackie Chan, and he's supposed to do a, a Jackie's supposed to do a jump, spinning kick, or some move. As he spins, he wants the timing to be where I come in with my sidekick and hit Jackie Chan in the chest and knock him down. So I said, fine, I can do it. No, her, no, let's go. So there's a hundred and so people on the set watching. There's people bust in. You know, actually the Chinese would come in and bust us in Barcelona, Spain for this. Oh, wow. So there's 500 people watching. There's the crew. I'm set. I know all I got to do is throw one sidekick, knock Jackie down with a sidekick. How hard is this? So we were getting ready to Samuel's behind the camera in this scene, and there is Jackie and Benny. And then Samuel says, Keith, what are you doing? I said, What do you mean? I'm ready. He goes, Change sides. I went, What do you mean, change sides? He goes, He says, You need to kick with your left leg, not your right. And I went, Oh, no, no, no. You don't want me kicking my left leg. I can <laughs> do it. I just can't control it like I can my right. And he goes, Oh, no problem. We'll change everything. We'll change our cameras, our pace. <laughs> And being facetious, I said, no, no, I can do it. Let's go. You know, that's a lesson you learn. You don't right. make excuses, you know. So, so everything is a learning step. So anyway, I said, no, let's go. I hit Jackie so many times with sidekicks. And each time I hit him, he would fall down, most of the time crying, most of the time excruciating pain with his all of his stunt guys that love him to death, all kneeling, and the producer screaming at me, Going, I knew it's going to be fired and sent back to America. <laughs> and, and all Samuel Hung would say over and over, he's behind the camera, the director, he goes, Keith, he'd give me a thumbs up and he'd go, more power, more power. <laughs> and Jackie would get his head up and look at Samuel and go, you yeah, know, because they're always fighting each other. That's great. So I'd get up and I did that scene, I did that scene. The final scene, I hit him in the throat, and that's the one they kept. And oh, I wow. Him, I hit him in the throat. I thought I killed him. And it's the worst thing I've ever done, which I teach. When he fell, it's, it's on my website, the KeithVitaliEnterprises.com. It's the last technique I hit Jackie Chan in. The, you see him go back 15 feet when I hit him. That's a real kick. And he goes down. I thought I crushed his lungs. So I stopped because I, I was shocked. That's when Samuel got mad at me. He says, don't ever break. Don't stop until I say action. I mean, to cut. He said, Keith, this is your best technique. Don't stop. So right. I always tell people, regardless, regardless of what you do. So later in that film, I'm fighting Jackie, I'm fighting Samuel now. And I did that 50 take thing, we're going over and over. We're all exhausted. You cannot be exhausted when you film. I can be exhausted in the ring. When I'm a fighter, I sure. can circle, move, I can, I can stall. You can't stall filming. You gotta give it 100% for every technique. So in this technique, I did, I was fighting two guys at the same time with weapons. I jump up and I spin, I'm supposed to break his staff. And he's supposed to look at me. Well, I went too deep and hit him in the head with a heel kick and knocked him out. Samuel Hung is lying unconscious on the ground. I stayed in my stance. I would not move. That's and he's the director. He's the only one that can say cut. <laughs> That's but great. Nobody, nobody broke. Everybody stood there. He got up so excited and clapped. He woke up about a minute later, gave me a big hug. <laughs> that is great. That's great. And, and your technique is beautiful. I'm a big, you know, uh, there's been a transition, particularly in competitive arts and Olympic uh, style to, to speed and things of that right. nature. But when it comes to power, uh, there's nothing that beats the sidekick. I, the sidekick is, uh, and when people execute it, execute it well. When I first got interested in, in the martial arts, uh, Grandmaster John Buren, who is the president of Flushing Bank here, I went to a demonstration and saw him with reality, not with a uh, you know, some of this, this pomp and circumstance, a group of guys holding a, a stack of boards and he broke those boards and knocked them down. And it wasn't something where they feigned falling. He literally knocked them over. I go, wow, I, that's, that's for me. I really have to, to get into that. And that's how well, I got involved. So. so that's the key. So I used to do seminars all over the world. And the key, I'm, I was right at almost six foot, 155 pounds. And I went, listen, why don't you, regardless of who we're fighting, and I did fighting seminars. No matter where I went around the world, I'd fight 30, 40, 50 people. And I go, why aren't you just rushing me and beating me up? What? I said, is it my front kick? Am I running? Is it my punch? Is it my looks? Is it my 155 pound frame? I said, they always go, your sidekick. I said, my sidekick stops everything. 
It doesn't matter. If your psychic's strong enough, it will stop the rain. It will stop everything. And that's the key to fighting is you have a strong psychic for your defense where you can stop. It gives you enough time to set up your techniques in them. But if you don't have something to stop that person that's usually, everybody who's way taller, I mean, hot, uh, heavier, sure. being a 155, all my jet grand championship fights were against the heavyweights normally. And, you know, they're 6'4", 230, whatever. It doesn't matter. Your psychic hits them just as hard in the rib cage. The rib cage is no different than anybody's. Sure. You know, unless I fake and get their arm up, I get their psychic in, and I just make eye contact, and I go, and no one's going through their mind. They're going, how did that guy hit me so hard? And I go, and I'm smiling because I know what's going through their mind. I've hit so many sure. psychic over the years. Sure, you've, you, the, the, the players are changed, but the, 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 the oh, yeah. script is the same. So it's I want to... Yep. I, I want to, in the interest of time, cover a number of things. One of the things I really want to cover, one of the reasons why I reached out to you is because I really love the project that you're working on. It's near and dear to my, my heart. I know it has personal, um, a personal familial uh, value for you, but <clears throat> bullying, anti-bullying, I've worked with, uh, I, I've actually worked with uh, New York City schools in Brooklyn on a pilot project together with uh, Grandmaster YH Park for an anti-bullying program. I think it's a wonderful program, and I see that um, your book is, is the latest one. Victor stops the school bully. Yeah, let me. I got it right here. That's right. What it's like. So, so you've written other things. You made a transition among you know you're 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 a Renaissance man. You 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 among all these other things, you've authored some some really highly successful books. But this is a little bit of a different. It, this isn't necessarily directed at the practicing adult martial artist. This is a different. Right, right. Tell us a little bit about that. How you got involved in it, and uh, about your your grandson. Yeah, I'm so excited about this book more than any other book. I mean, once the first book I wrote that I was really excited about was a tournament karate. It was the Bible of how to fight back in my day. Super Dan Anderson, one of my best friends, had another book out, and his was just as good. And then Bill Wallace had a book out about stretching. So sure. we were the three people that had books out that people would study and learn about kicks and, and fighting. But then I did some bullet, I did a whole series of how-to books for a company, they were successful. One did over 30,000 copies and was a textbook of a, a USC. But then I did a bullying book. I did a bullying tape that I was on the Oprah show with about, the, you know, about the key is defending yourself without hurting the other child. And that's my whole basis of my teaching is that most of the time a martial arts is so violent, we're always teaching about stranger danger, but most of the time you're attacked in life by bullying, it's by your friends. Right. By somebody at school, by your brother who's being a jerk. So you can't just display and execute killing blows against your sister or your brother. So I, I came up with a series for this video, self-defense techniques, really easy, how to defend yourself without hurting the other child. Well, I went all over the country. I got in every newspaper in the United States. I was on the front page of USA Today. And on the open show, only because my philosophy was not hurting the other child. Stranger danger is different. You kill, you, you sure, shoot, you want sure. somebody. But when it's just a playground thing, you don't want to hurt the other child. So I had this idea. My best friend is Mike. One of my best friends is Mike Geneva, like I said. One of the best, most knowledgeable instructors I've ever, ever you know, known. So I said, I'm going to write a book, get it illustrated, use Mike as the instructor, and have those little boys, like 10 years old, you just deal with life. And the first one's going to be going to school and learning how to make friends, just everything in life, and also bullies. So I used my, well, guess what? Years went by. I didn't do anything with the book. I didn't finish it. The coronavirus hits. My sure. wife goes, why don't you finish that book you've been waiting, working on while we're down for coronavirus? I've got an insurance agency as well. I, I, so I'm working from home, but I said, let's do it. So I started with the book, and my grandson, Sam, which is me. He's a mini me. He is me. My love of my life. He comes over. And he goes, what are you writing? So I explained to him, he goes, granddad, nobody talks like that. That's Tim. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you're an old man. He says, we don't talk like that. And I went, you're right. And it was a light bulb that hit me. I went, no, you're right. I am an old man. Why am I writing about a 10-year-old boy when I don't know crap about how 10-year-olds right. speak? So I said, Sam, would you, mind, would you mind helping me? He pulls up a chair and he says, let's go through it. And we started going page by page. And I used his terminology, his language, instead of mine. And I went, and he's my grandson. I went, this is great on all levels for me. And then yeah, I said, sure. how, how would you deal with the bully? Or what would you do? Those kind of things. And so it, it was the, one of the greatest experiences of my life to write this book. 
a lot of people have ideas, but you don't finish or follow up with sure. ideas. And you just got to be disciplined. I think my track running, when you're running 20 miles back when I was young, you have a thousand reasons why you want to quit running. Every time you get out there to run, you, right. you, my side hurts. I'll do, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll quit. You know, you know you've got to be disciplined and finish it. And this book, I finished. And when I finished it, got it published. It's got great national reviews already. And I'm going to now, they're, they're working right now to South Carolina. Um, I'm going this Wednesday to receive some award for it in South Carolina from a senator. And then they're trying to put it in first in South Carolina schools. Hopefully, the schools and libraries throughout the United States. So that is a one, wonderful thing, and I congratulate you. Now, tell me because I really I'm going to uh, I'm going to link this in in our show notes. Where can folks get the book? Uh, how can they find out more? Right, Where is it available. First, I mean, I hope everybody goes to my my website, KeithVitaleEnterprises.com. There's a book section there. You click on it, it goes right to Amazon, and where you can purchase it. And I've got it in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Just I wanted to have all different kinds of uh, venues for it. And, you know, it's just, uh, so very simply, I mean, it's three different right. prices. The Kindle's like four ninety nine, really simple. I will, uh, I'll link that. Uh, I w we'll, we'll, we'll post that now. Your, your website, that, that's great. That was one of the other things I want to speak to. I, I went to your website in anticipation of this conversation. I don't know if that's relatively new. I get the sense relatively new. It's really yeah, beautiful. It's a, a week old. It's I, gotta week old. I have to tell you, for, for all of our listeners to, to check out, it is a premier website. It has a great, um, you've done so much. And one of the things I find in a lot of websites uh, is that it, there's a lot of confusion, right? And, and, and all parts of people's lives are sort of, uh, amalgamated right. in a way that makes it hard to navigate. Your your website is beautiful. It has uh, uh, all the various aspects of your life sort of compartmentalized, and and you can go there and beautiful photographs. You've got videos there. You've got the place for the book. You've got the place for your martial arts. It's a phenomenal website. We'll, we'll, well link it, and 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 I congratulate well, you on that as well. Thanks so much. I I I got a first class company in Georgia. I said it's it's a representation of my life. I don't want to get anybody just to make it cheap. It's got to be a proper representation. You know, it's like your front door to your house. If your front door looks terrible, your first impression is your house is terrible. So I, I said, please do a great job. It's tough because, you know, I've got the film world, the martial arts world, sure. and the, the books and stuff. And one of my, some of my favorite stuff is I love the fighting gifts they have on one page. They have like six of my fights, but only like five or six seconds of it. Sure. Where you can just sit back and kind of enjoy. You're not reading as much. You're just it's viewing. It's nice. It's visually very nice. It's got a lot of information. I I, I encourage everybody to check it out. Like I said, uh, we we could talk all day over any one of the areas of your various uh, projects. But I wanted to touch on on, on a number of these things. Uh, and uh, so tell me about your perspective in the last couple of minutes that we have. What is your perspective? You, you've been in this game a long time. As you said, when, when you got involved in training in the martial arts, people barely knew what it was. And, and today, uh, probably where you live in almost anywhere, there's a some sort of, sort of martial arts school on almost every corner, uh, right. anywhere you're going to go. What is your perspective on, on the change in terms of the, the age that we're in now? Uh, you know, it's a different type of style um, in terms of, the focus of, of, of many of these schools is very different from when you started training. What's your perspective on the state of martial arts and karate and Taekwondo today? Well, I, I thought it was too, when it first came, it's too much like boot camp, too boot campish where, you know, the white belt coming in was dirt and you treat them like dirt. Now it's totally the opposite to where, you know, you get your black belt in two years, you can buy it anywhere and the whole bit. So I'm somewhere in the middle of that. I'm totally, I, I started the first school, I think, of positive reinforcement because I was so hammered and abused from my instructor that I promised when I went to go teach and open my own schools, I would never teach anyone in that way. A little boy comes in and he's late for class. I don't say give me 10 push-ups. I hug him. Thank you for coming. Right. His parents are the ones that made him late. Why am I, why am I mad at him? So anyway, what I think is, the problem with, I see now is not their problem. I think athletes get better, but they don't, they don't have the form that we had. We had magazines doing stories and articles. They created heroes and stars. There's so many people, the Bill Wallaces and all these guys, the magazines created the stars. Not anyone from the 85 on today does anybody know who they are other than MMA. So the right. karate world, the tournament world, no one knows who they are because the magazines gave up on them. They called. They started uh, producing tournaments 
where they started giving away world championships to every division. And now when you have 600 world champions in one tournament times five, 10 years, the, they said, we, we're too confused. There's so many world champions. We don't right. know who they are. When I fought, I was the single only number one in the country. There was no other magazine. Now, all the magazines all came together, and I was the guy. Guys would tell me, I have your photograph, your, your covers on the wall. I wake up in the morning. All I can think about you is being you and destroying you. I, I go, thank you so much. That's the best compliment you could ever get. It's not going to work. But thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> you are still, and you are still listed. A Black Belt Magazine gave you the award as being one of the 10 best fighters of all time. Uh, oh, again, so you, 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 uh, you come up on, on everybody's list. Anybody who's had the opportunity to watch uh, any of your, your competitive, um, uh, you know, your fighting, it, 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 it speaks for itself. And I agree with you. And I agree. And I think, you know, the world with martial arts is a better, is a better place. Right. Uh, I think it's great that children study it. I also, from you, tend to come from a little bit more traditional value, and I think balance is is good. I agree. Somewhere in the middle, right? We don't necessarily want to, uh, you know, this, you know, we're 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 not studying for, for we're not training for war, and 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 right. the difference between martial arts training and other forms is that there has to be a certain code and a tradition. It has to be somewhere in the middle. And Mark, you just hit on it very quickly, and I'm now going to devote the rest of my career on using the martial arts to create a better world. And I really am serious about it because through the martial arts tenets, you know, the integrity and discipline and respect and courtesy, we've lost all that in schools. We've lost that in life. We've lost that in politics. Where do you have that? You have that at home. You have that in the martial arts. And we've got to get that, we've got to get that philosophy, the way the martial arts conducts themselves back into the schools. And that's what I'm working with schools now. The ample, you know, we, I'm not talking about kicking. I'm talking about, you know, how you treat others and the respect. That's wonderful. Grandmaster Keith Vitale, I want to thank you for talking to us today. We are going to uh, promote this heavily. We, we're going we're gonna to direct our, our uh, magazine and we'll direct when this comes out. I'll send you all the information, but we'll wonderful. make sure that people know where they can get this book. Uh, we, we look forward to speaking to you further. And like I said, uh, to me, um you are a a legend and you're a gentleman and and i really you're 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 the essence of a true martial artist and and i talked to a lot of people over the last 15 years in doing this and and i am extremely excited and honored to be speaking to you today and i love what it is that you're doing now and and i wish you all the success in the book um to you to your family to your grandson and and we look forward to speaking to you further but we will definitely um do our part to help promote and make sure that your your book becomes a, a household name. And Mark, I just want to tell you also, thank you so much for those kind words. And I really, really enjoyed this interview. It was fun. That's so great. You're, you're really good at what you do because I really enjoyed this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I look forward to it. I, I give you a bow. I thank you very well, much. Thank you, sir. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. All right. Take care. Thank you. Be well, sir. You too. All right. Bye.